Welcome to 10 Questions with NBC10 Boston. I am Kwani Lunas, and this is a new year, but we're still doing this series. I want to welcome our first guest of 2021, Blake Bolden. For those who don't know, she's a Boston College hockey alum, but she has gone on to do so much more since then, so we're going to talk about that right now. Welcome, Blake Bolden. Kwani, thank you. It's so good to see your face. I feel like we're FaceTiming right now. We're just having a good catch up. <laughs> That's really all it is, even though people are watching. <laughs> How have you been? Uh, I've been good, I guess. Um, as of right now, it's 2021, so it's you're trying to have a positive outlook on life and to move forward. So you're just controlling what you can, and uh, right now it's okay. Absolutely. And for those who don't know your story, you've done so much in the hockey world, but if you could briefly just recap your start in Cleveland, Ohio, how you got into the hockey world. Yeah, uh, as you said, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I started playing boys hockey when I was seven years old. I fell in love with the game when I was watching the AHL Cleveland Bear, or Cleveland Lumberjacks, I almost said Cleveland Barons, <laughs> which was my youth team that I played on. And uh, I started watching the Lumberjacks. I loved the physicality. I was really excited about it. It was a different sport than anything that I've ever seen. So. From there, I just honed in on my skills. I went to prep school. I went to Boston College with you. Uh, after that, played professionally. And then lo and behold, I'm the first woman to compete in the National Women's Hockey League of color. And that has been something that I've carried with me and have been passionate about my entire career. Uh, right now, currently, I work with the Los Angeles Kings as a professional scout, and that has been really exciting. It's actually my one-year mark uh, this January 3rd, and uh, we're just we're just moving the needle here in the hockey community and in the world. Absolutely, and you mentioned that you are the first Black woman or woman of color to play professional women's hockey. What has that journey been like over the years when you always seem to be the only one that looked like you on the ice? Yeah, uh, the journey has been tough, but I think it's truly shaped me to be this person that feels empowered and strong. And every time I see a young black girl that comes to me and is like, hey, I played hockey because of you, or I feel that I can do this sport and be here because of you, I'm like, oh, it was all worth it. All the bad stuff, all the trials and tribulations that myself and my family went through, all of that just goes out the door because... I feel so happy that I can give back to the sport in that way. And you did mention the the girls that look up to you. You have taken mentorship very seriously. When yeah. did you decide to take up that mantle of giving back to girls that are coming up? Yeah, I think that was in about uh, 2016. Um, I, I just had a hit a moment where I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with the sport um, outside of just playing. And mentally, I felt like there was this void for young girls and even boys of just, yeah, you can work out and do a lot of agility and, and work on your physical body. But I think right now, especially, it's very important to have that mental check and to set goals and be able to work towards them. So I started a mentorship program with Blake Bolton Athletics, and I've worked with some tremendous girls um, who are in college now. And my youngest girl is about 12 years old. She's so amazing. But yeah, it's it's been so great. And part of your role with the LA Kings, in addition to being a scout, is also that inclusion and diversity aspect as well in the LA community. What has that been like incorporated with your role? Oh, it's been so exciting because I feel like I'm really stepping into my purpose. Uh, mm -hmm. And the Los Angeles Kings has really just given me the keys to do what I do best, and that is to inspire the youth. And Los Angeles is one of the most diverse cities, especially of color, um, in, in our country, I believe, personally. And it's just exciting to get out there and work with YMCAs and Boys and Girls Clubs and, and interact one-on-one uh, -on -one and with large groups of people. And just to say, hey, listen, you're a person of color, but that does not mean that you can't play the sport of ice hockey. And if you want to learn, um, and even if you want to be a fan, we're open and we want to be inclusive for you. Your biggest local tie is playing at Boston College as well as the Boston Pride. Yeah. And 
But I think another big tie that people may not know is the Willie O'Ree was the first black player to integrate the NHL. And you have had conversations with him. What has that been like? Oh, man. I wish every person could meet Willie because he is so inspirational. But then outside of that, he's so funny. He's (laughs) 86 years old. He's been through so much. I mean, when he tells his story, you get goosebumps. And uh, I think it's pretty funny and serendipitous that we both came from Boston and now we're both on the West Coast living in San Diego. Oh, wow. working to diversify hockey. It's just crazy. I feel like I like follow him all over the place. <laughs> uh, but being able to hang out with him is amazing. He has so much insight and experience. And uh, I hope that I can just continue to pass on that torch. Has he given you any tips when it comes to the fact that you do stand out? And sometimes it could, could be considered a, a burden, essentially, of being the first or being the only. What have those conversations looked like with him? Yeah, he he really just says don't have fear and follow your intuition. Um, he's big with the with the children. He's always telling them to set goals, and he keeps it real. You know, he doesn't ever sugarcoat things. He's like, this is hard what we're doing, and if you have the thick skin, I think you'll go far. And I am supporting you, and that that means the most to me that we have each other's back and that I could just hang out with him, right. <laughs> especially during Black History Month, which is coming up soon. As I mentioned, you, you mentioned you were the first black female woman, I mean, female to scout in the NHL. What does the scouting aspect look like for you? And, and why do you think it's so important for you to be in that role? Yeah, well, my, my whole life has been this, like, where you meet a moment and then you just, if you just accept it. It wasn't something that I ever thought that I would ever do. I didn't wake up thinking, I'm going to be a scout, but the moment presented itself, or the opportunity, I should say, and I said, heck yeah, like, I want to learn as much as I can. Why not work in the NHL for a prestigious organization like the Los Angeles Kings? Are you kidding me? Um, So I grabbed that opportunity, and I've learned so much. The Kings organization and the leadership took, you know, a little bit of a leap of faith in hiring a woman who it's not necessarily a a normal thing to hire a woman in the scouting world and operations and hockey. So they have been very open. They've helped me so much along my process. I've learned a lot just being from a player perspective to now Mm -hmm. scouting. I view the game so much differently. um, And there's so much to learn. Like year one, I said, I I have so (laughs) much work to do, uh, but it's exciting. What was the hardest transition from being a full-time athlete so moving into the front office uh, atmosphere. Yeah, I would just say a little bit of organization. Um, when I was scouting, my first day was January 3rd, and I was still playing at the same time. So it was going out and playing on the weekends and then getting my mind ready to watch a hockey game and analyze it and understand the players. Um, and, it, and I think it kind of helped my game too, because I could – you know, take off my equipment and go back and say, okay, this is what happened. This is what I should have done more so than I would have um, if I hadn't been scouting. So uh, I think just the time management and and understanding there are so many games that are played normal in a normal season. And uh, that was challenging just to keep up with it all. The NHL season starts on January 13th, but your role, I would assume, looks a little different now that we are in Still, I think in the middle of a pandemic, what yeah. adjustments do you think you're gonna, you're gonna have to make on the scouting end of things? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of adjustments. Um, preferably, we like to go to the games uh, and be there physically just to have that environment and to see the players and how they react in response to, you know, whether they're home or away. Um, so I think a lot of what we're going to see and be doing is on video which the good thing about that is you can stop and you could press play and you could keep going back uh, and analyzing it a bit deeper. Um, but it's just going to be a different flow and a different vibe. And I think we've practiced throughout the NHL playoffs in 2020 and definitely in World Juniors this, this past week. Um, and uh, I'm excited about it because that means I can just do more and learn quicker because I don't have to physically be somewhere. I could just press pause and press play and keep running it back. Work life aside, what has this quarantine self social distancing life looked like for you? Oh, you know, I am someone who loves to rise to the occasion, 
and think positively. So when the quarantine hit, it was actually right after my birthday. Uh, I had just gone to Disneyland and I was on this crazy high of just being like, yeah, it's my birthday. Disneyland is amazing. And then boom, everything was shut down. Um, so after I emotionally got over that, I just was like, oh, what am I going to do to, like I said, mentally be stable through all, all of this? Because um, it can be depressing to be locked indoors and not be close to your friends and family. So my partner and I, we just we started working out a lot. Um, I started a garden. I wrote an ebook for plant-based meals because I'm very into nutrition. And uh, I've just kept myself busy. You know, you just got to set a task for the day or the week and then achieve it. And then you feel like you uh, accomplished something. What has self-care looked like in addition to the things that you mentioned? Yeah, uh, I would say, okay, so physical self-care. So not just working out, but like stretching and a yoga. I'd be watching yoga on YouTube in my house, like <laughs> just looking crazy in my living room. Um, I just got a sauna. So I've been sweating out all the toxins from all the fat, the delivery services that I've <laughs> accumulated with DoorDash and Uber Eats and all of that. Um, but then also, you know, meditation and breathing, breath work and, and just trying to calm my mind because as you know, calm, like Kwani, there's so much going on right now. Like mm -hmm. the world is just spinning so fast, even in this stillness. So you got to get your mind right. And in addition to all of the things that I mentioned, I literally promoted this interview by saying, just look at her Wikipedia because you've done so many <laughs> But I did notice that you were surprised with your own signature hockey stick. What was that feeling like? <laughs> oh, it was amazing. Honestly, it's a huge honor. Uh, Vergero is a newer brand um, and it's on the come up, right? We're, we're so used to the staples in hockey. And I think mm -hmm. right now we're at a time where we're trying to embrace individuality and and customizing things and, and bringing swag into the hockey world because it's been, you know, a little square. <laughs> so <laughs> let's, let's bring some color and some pizzazz. And I was really honored to be surprised. I had no idea. And that's actually right there. If you can see it, hey. um, it's hanging up and I haven't used it because I don't want to break it, but maybe I'll, I'll bring it out on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, your title literally says growth and inclusion, inclusion specialist for the LA Kings. So looking at the landscape of the sport right now, what would you like to see over the next maybe five or 10 years when it comes to diversifying the game? Yeah, for me specifically, um, as I said, Los Angeles is so diverse and I was having a lot of communication and, and talks with our community relations vice president and our COO, Kelly Cheeseman and Jennifer Pope. And we just want to see more inclusivity. We want to see different color people in our fan base um, supporting Los Angeles Kings. We just uh, signed Quentin Byfield, second overall pick highest black drafted black player ever in the NHL. So that's really exciting. Uh, we have Akil Thomas, we have some color and it's really exciting. And I hope our fans respond well to that um, and can use those guys as, as role models uh, for the sport. Um, so we're just really looking to push that. I wanna see more color. I wanna see people picking up sticks of Hispanic backgrounds, Latina X backgrounds, um, black and, and brown communities in Los Angeles. I want to see it all. And the snowball is building and it's pushing um, and it's going to be cool to see in the future. Once we raise the cup, we're going to yeah. see a ton of color in the stands in that parade. I'm sure the Boston fans wa uh, watching right now don't really want to hear you say LA was going to I know. <laughs> But we'll let that one slide. I know, right? <laughs> I thought about that before I came on here. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I've always been a Boston fan. It's exactly. part of my heart, right? You're one of the few people that can bring Boston and LA together, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the final question. I noticed, if I did my research correct correctly, that you still aren't technically retired from hockey. I know. I know. I know. I don't like the R word. I really don't. Because um, because also, I don't know when I'm going to decide to just jump back in. 
I don't want to be, I don't want to jump the gun, the gun and say, Oh, I'm retired and have this whole party. And then a year or two later being like, Oh, Blake Bowen's back. So yeah, I'm going to push that back. And this, this past year, there was not much of a season and this upcoming year is, is a little bit confusing. Um, We're doing the best we can in women's hockey. And for me, most importantly is, is creating a sustainable women's league. Um, Hopefully that's supported by the NHL and, and that's what I want to see in the future. And maybe when that happens, I'll bring my Blake Bolden, uh, <laughs> my Blake Bolden stick, get on the ice and crush it. But right now I'm just having a lot of fun uh, in the working environment. And that's kind of where I am at the at this moment. Absolutely. And you're still, I see you skating out in L.A. So you're going to be if you right. Want, right back on the ice in no time. These guns aren't going anywhere, right? Right. Look, you are the inspiration. <laughs> Blake Bolden, it has been a pleasure. It is good, good seeing you and good seeing all the things that you're doing, even though it is in LA, as I said. <laughs> I'm wishing you the best. Thank you. I'll get back out to Boston. I miss my autumn and my and my leave changing and all the seasons. So I want to go back there, have a cup of coffee, and see you in action because I'm really proud of you and all that you've accomplished. I appreciate you.